Alright guys, I'm up here today uh, working on the cinder block, my 2002 Cadillac DeVille uh, DTS. Uh, this was one of the models that had the, the four-wheel leveling system in it. Um, and of course, over time, with 180,000 miles, the shocks wear out, get replaced. Uh, I've had the car for about a year now. I've put roughly about 17,000 miles on it. Uh, the original owner had swapped um, the struts on it all the way around. Uh, the fronts are just standard um, Monroe sense of tracks. Um, unfortunately, his mechanic did not get the, the sensors to plug in to tell the computer, yes, there's something there. Um, so the computer sets a code and since the fronts aren't adjustable, they sit in a certain position. Well, the rear, um, even the replacements are an air ride shock. Um, the ones he had gotten, unfortunately, did not have the electronic sensor attached to it like the original. And once again, the mechanic did not put the sensor, you know, a, a resistor in that used to be available um, to tell the computer yes there's something there um and just and it fixes the rate at a certain position so the car sits level um i'm having to go through and try to figure all this out i've, I've replaced with original ac delco shocks um not long after i got it they've got the correct sensors they're plugged in um, I've done my research on the fronts, on the front struts themselves for the connectors. And it's another stalled project that, you know, you lose parts. I lost the resistors that I had gotten for it and I haven't gotten around to reordering it. But until then, the rear end for the last year has pretty much squatted. I apologize for the poor quality. I'm recording this on my phone. Um, which has a cracked lens on it. So some of the light gets hazed out. But until I can get that done, the rear's been dragging, you know, sitting lower than, than it should. And I'm finally getting around. I thought until I can do it, all the way correctly um, I went ahead and I, I got online I ordered um, some of you older guys might remember when back in the day when we used to run the air shocks in the back of cars to lift a rear end way up in the air like used to be the thing to do um, I ordered a airline kit for those and came in and I'm running, I'm running the lines so I can manually inflate the rear to get it up to height. I, I eventually want to get it right because I love the way the car handles. I'm afraid this is going to kind of take away some of that. Um, you know, being a touring model, I love, I love a car that handles. You know, my motto is, yeah, you guys can have your quarter, uh, quarter mile at a time, you know, for 10 seconds, yada, yada, yada. There's more curves on a normal road than a quarter mile stretch. And if you look at the end of a quarter mile, you have to turn. Remember that. So let me let me get my camera turned around. All right, got the, got the car on the lift. And let me get a, let me get a light here. If you look, there's the connector right there. This kit actually fits that connector. So I guess the newer style air shocks are actually running that style. So at least I know it'll fit right. Um, if you look, I had the original line just kind of set off back there. 
Um, it's not gonna go anywhere. And if it does, I can always reuse this line, cut and splice, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but I've got it zip tied here and I've got it run underneath the car. I've got it zip tied there. Zip ties are a wonderful thing. And what I'm doing, because the muffler's right here and I don't want it falling down on the muffler and melting and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right in that little hole, feed it all the way down this frame tube and it's open right there. I can fish it through, come out that hole, channel it through here and hopefully through this other hole. And it'll end up looking like this. So it's not hitting the muffler anywhere. Come up here and there I have it zip tied just like the other, just like this side. Let me get the light here. And it's in no danger of hitting the hitting the exhaust and, and melting. So let me get this finish tied up and we'll go ahead and get it down on the ground and see if it levels out. All right, guys, just a quick uh, check back. Uh, Change the game a little bit. I put the valve right behind the bumper don't don't mind that tab it wasn't attached already because this car does have a history with an accident i believe um so everything's not where it's supposed to be um but what i did was where we came out of the frame rail in fact i could probably just run it right out this little corner right here through this channel through that reinforcement and then we connect into the valve right here and guys this doesn't take any specialized tools uh, really all I've been using is wire ties uh, zip ties and uh, a side cutter and a drill um, this hole was already there I started drilling one next to it but I thought okay Instead of fishing the hoses through there and possibly chafing it up, I just open it up a little bit more on the tire valve and then the hose up to the T back here. Um, you do have to run a, a hose in between. They don't give you anything to connect this to that other than the plastic tubing type style. And these, they don't take any special crimps or anything like that is just a small o-ring and all right guys um getting everything buttoned back together here change the oil um still got to put it in uh getting the wheels bolted back on and nice thing about it in the shop you know ooga dooga but one thing you guys got to remember number one if you put them on too tight, it can warp your rotors, cause all kind of shaking in the in the brakes and steering. It'll warp your wheels. And number two, when the wife's driving it and has a flat tire, you know, and calls you to come change it after about one or twelve barley pops or your favorite adult soft drink, you want to get out and be able to change it rather quickly before the local law enforcement comes by and catches you so i've got this on the lowest setting and and guys just a quick tip if you're using air like this don't play you know the the pit crew to see how fast you can do it you know take your time put the lugs on of oh, oh, several threads at least so if you just jam it on a half a thread and then put the impact gun on, you're not gonna go rounding out your threads and just make it a general nightmare for you. So just that helpful hint, you know, to keep you from being in trouble with the wife and 
possibly being in trouble with the law. All right, helpful hint for the day. Once, you know, I, I set the car on the ground and moved the car back and forth till some just to settle the suspension on it. And of course it was down and you see, I added a few PSI to it. I mean, it's probably running 10 PSI and wow, what a difference. This wheel well before I started, I should have thought ahead to video this. I didn't until I was halfway done. Um, but the wheel well right here was sitting right about here. So it really didn't have much travel at all. Um, the car looked like a, a hamster dragging its butt going down the road. Um, now it sits somewhat level. You know, I didn't, I didn't install them to put the rear end 10 feet up in the air. That wasn't my intention. Um, but the way it sits now, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm hoping cause this side here drooped down before. So I'm thinking I had a line leak and it just wouldn't hold any residual pressure. Um, like the other side was. So I don't know what it was, but I'm happy with the results. Um, hopefully when I edit this out, you know, when I edit this whole video, um, I'll be able to put in an outro on it and, and let you know how it did going down the road. Um, I also, while I had it up in the air, changing the oil, you know, I went ahead, I checked the brakes on it, which I know we're good. Uh, the tie rods are still okay. I put those on not long after I got the car, a little right around a year ago. Um, all the bearings are good. Um, I did have a shimmy on the freeway at about between 70 and 75 that got kind of bad at times. Um, I did find one tire that was out of balance and I'm, I'm lucky enough, you know, this is a club shop. It's not a regular repair shop that I'm lucky enough to have access to some of these tools um that normally i could not afford even remotely um you know it's a club shop you know so you know we all kind of band together and and balancer and the mounter you know they're they're owned by one person um he's generously allowed the rest of us to be able to use them as well you know, and I, I got to give him a big shout out for that. You know, all the guys in here are great. You know, I, I try not to show a lot of their stuff because there's a couple of them that get a little bit nervous about, you know, if someone finds out the location, you know, someone's going to break in. Um, so, you know, if, if some scenes are a little bit choppy in the final edit, I apologize about that. It's just something in the background that I don't really want to give away. Um, and get someone here upset at me because I am lucky to be able to be here um, and be able to do some of this stuff. So I'll pack it up for the night and when I edit this out, let you know how everything did. Um, like I said, I did find one tire that was way off balance and that was on one of the front wheels which is odd because it felt like the vibration was coming out of the body of the car, which is one way you can usually tell. If the, if the shake is coming from the body and you feel it in your seat, it's usually the rear wheels. And if you feel it in the steering wheel or your arms, that's in the front wheels because it's transferring through the steering. Uh, geez, I'm, I guess I'm just full of helpful hints tonight. Yeah, uh, Most of you probably already knew that, so. All right. All right, uh, all right, cleaning up, getting out of here, going home, having dinner and a uh, barley pot. Talk to y'all soon. I uh, appreciate you following. Bye. Bring the funk back. back, back.